by the word and every deed done in our body, we will have standing account. The Bible says, for whom much is given, much is required. The, the book of Hebrews says it would have been for better for you not to have known the way of truth and then to turn away from it. A lot of people come out here just to eat, but we have more than food that nourishes the body. Yes, sir. We have food that has come down from heaven. Jesus said, I am the bread that cometh down from heaven. He said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you cannot be my disciples. You see, that's a hard saying. The Jews said, that's a hard saying. Who can hear that? You see, I have no problem because Christ has to be in me. And that, 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 that flesh that I eat, I eat the body of Christ. And he permeates to me. And that blood that sets me free and puts me at liberty to live and move and have my being in Jesus is because of the blood that atoned for my sin, took away my iniquity, and loosened me from the chains that had me bound all of my life. Amen. You see, some of y'all know that I have been where you've been at. I have sat in these chairs, not in this city, but in the city of New Orleans. I was a drug addict from the age of 15 years old. I was bound in the penitentiary and many other places where many of y'all have been. But today I stand here a man who has been liberated, freed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. The same power that has set me free will set you free. But are you willing to bear the cross that Jesus said? He said, if any man would be my disciple, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. Amen. Yes, it is trying. And I want to read a quote here from a pastor from New York City who has gone home to be with the Lord, Pastor David Wilkerson. He says it this way. In the book of Psalms 32, verses 8 and 9, it says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. Be not as the horse or as the mule which has no understanding, whose mouth must be held with a bit and bridle, lest you come near unto thee. You see, God is telling us, unless we come and submit to him and follow him, that we become like mules and horses. you got to be putting with a bit in your mouth and you got to be told where to turn and where to go. God's not looking for people that he has to rule over. He's looking for people that will follow him. It goes on to say here, in these two brief verses, God gives us a great lesson concerning guidance. We can build a great faith upon the foundation knowing that he is willing to lead and guide us into everything. Yet the word of God says that a person may be a believer who enjoys the spiritual benefits of being a child of God and yet remain a stubborn mule when it comes to submitting to the ways of the guiding and the leading of the Lord. I went through my muleship. At times when I preach, I have white spittle coming out the sides of my mouth. It looked like them old mules on, on Decatur Street in New Orleans that pull them caught. <laughs> That's why I reckoned it to mule spit. But you know one thing, I'm glad a Balaam had a mule who was able to speak back to the prophet. He said, don't you see that angel yeah. standing between us? He's got a sword in his hand. You see, God can use a mule to speak his word. And so if I must become a mule, let me come willingly and freely and speak the word of God. He goes on to say, it says, God said for Israel, 40 years long I, I am grieved with your generation and this, it is a people that do err in their heart and they never have known my ways. Do you realize the people he's talking about wandered in the wilderness for 40 years? Yeah, God kept shoes on their feet and clothes on their back and food in their belly, but that's all they achieved in Christ their whole life dependency upon the natural and never coming into the supernatural and knowing the incarnation of Jesus Christ the divine nature that is in all of us you might go to now can't it can't compare to the glory that will come out of you not when we get to heaven here that he will permeate his person and everybody that sees you and talks to you will say what is it with that guy there's something different about him and so we find here he said, don't, don't spend your energy seeking uh, food. He said, but spend your energy seeking eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of approval. He replied, 
we want to perform God's work too. What should we do? And Jesus told them, this is the only work that God wants from you. Believe in the one in whom he sent. Is that simple enough? Yes, sir. All we have to do is to believe in the one in whom he sent. And when we believe it with our hearts and not with our minds, that word, that person will change our life. And our attitude is a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, the Bible says. So when God begins to set you free by the truth of Jesus Christ, your attitude of your mind begins to change. Now, remind of his encounter with God, kind of similar to your rebirth, to being born again. You'll never forget it when it happens to you. You'll never forget it. And Jacob never forgot when God made his hip jump out of socket. Never forgot it. And so the angel said, you got to let me go. And Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And you know what the angel said to, the, to Jacob? He says, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, no more will you be called Jacob, but you will be called Israel, a prince with God. And you, Fenella, will have power with God and with man. My, you see, that's what happened to me too. I don't have to fall back where I came from. I'm still exploring where I'm going. Because he's taking me of heights that I have never seen. He's taking me to depths that I have never been. Where I'm pulling something up when I come back up. I'm going as further to the east and to the west in Christ. Yeah, today. Today we need more than just some, some red beans and rice that we're going to eat in a few minutes. We need to quit coming up here every Wednesday and saying the sinner's prayer. If you keep doing that, that means you never got saved from the beginning. You wasn't serious when you said it. And it don't mean nothing. That's right. Ask God to open up your That's heart truth. and to Amen. show you Jesus. And you know what? When you see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you'll fall and you will worship Him for who He is. Not for what He can give you or what He gave. He gave something. He gave His life. The Bible says that while we were yet dead in our sins, Christ died for us. And I'm going to cut my message short, but I'm just going to give you some things. That God woke me up this morning. You can ask my wife. We had to get up and cook this food this morning, me and her. But the Lord woke me up way before the food, like He's trying to wake you up right now, way before the food. He's trying to get something across to you. That if you just seek Him, He will be found of you. In John 6, 24 through 29, it says, So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor His disciples were there, they got into the boat and went across to Capernaum to look for Him. They found Him on the other side of the lake and asked Him, Rabbi, how did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. He says, you want to be with me because I fed you. Not because you understand the miraculous signs. You see, whenever you get saved and born again, that's the greatest sign you ever want to see in your life. That is the testimony that they say that we will overcome by the word of our testimony. Not loving our lives as the dead by the blood of the Lamb. And I got it kind of backwards there, but all three of those are in the book of Revelations. So Jesus says, you didn't come here to hear the truth, to get free. You came here to eat because I provided food. He made 5,000 loaves. He fed 5,000 people. Not 5,000 loaves, but 5,000 people he fed. And then in the book of Mark, he fed 4,000. We have courage in our hearts. And to begin to say, you know what? I don't want to know nothing but Christ and him crucified in my life. You see, I had three years in the penitentiary when I got saved. I didn't, get it. I didn't escape my, my sentence, but the Bible, I had three years to study God's Word. Those three years impacted my life in such a, a dynamic way that now I know who I am and I don't have to act out who I was. Old things are passed away and behold all things have become new in Christ Jesus. He says here personally, <laughs> I am tired of being a mule-led Christian with no understanding of the principles of God. Are you tired yet? 
Or you're tired of just staying and coming here to eat food every, every Wednesday and going back and doing what you regularly do all the time? Why not step out and trust God and go beyond the food and get to the real food, which is the bread that comes down from heaven?